So we just create a new variable, which will be of the right type of type double. So now let's see what the result will be of this. And if we do so, now we can see we get this 1.66666, but at one point it just rounds up the last value here. What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you are going to learn how to use the arithmetic operators in Kotlin and learn why the type, the data type is important when building your code. So let's look at that. But before we do, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We're uploading videos regularly for Android app development. So definitely don't miss out by hitting the subscribe button. And now let's get started. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to look into operators and we're going to start with arithmetic operators. So I want to show you the following. The arithmetic operators that you probably have seen before, of course, as you were in school, I guess. So plus, minus, the multiplication, division, and then the modulo operator. So this might be the only one that you have not seen because it's not very common to use the modulo operator outside of programming. So what we can do is we can, of course, create a variable called result, and it's going to store the result of a calculation. So we're using this arithmetic operator, the plus sign. So we're adding two values. And by doing so, what we get is eight, and the eight will be stored in results. So it's not going to store this calculation itself, but it's going to store the result in this variable called result. So now what we can of course do is we can print result. So let's do that. But before we do so, I'm going to comment out the print that we had before, this last character one, and let's run this. And there we are. So I had to run it twice again due to the bug. So we can see eight is printed onto the screen. Now what we can do is we can overwrite result with a calculation that will use result itself. So if I do something like this, where I say result equals result divided by two, it will store four in this variable called result. So now instead of eight, it's going to print four onto the console. And there we are, it says four. Now you see that I get a little warning or a tip here where it says replace with slash equal. So instead of saying result equals result divided by two, I can say result slash equal two. This will give us the same result. So the same value pretty much. So what this line here does is it says the result value is going to take its own value and then divide it by two and then store the new result into itself. So in this case, it's going to take eight and then it's going to divide by two. So that's what this slash sign does. So now instead of the, using the slash, let's multiplicate. So let's use the asterisk here in order to do the new calculation. So it's going to take the old result and now multiply it with two. So this will result in a 16. So let's test this. And there we are, it says 16 here at the bottom. So that's the multiplication. Now, of course, we can also use the plus sign, plus equal, we'll then add two to the whole thing. So it should be 10. And there we are, it says 10. And of course, the same thing with the minus. So minus equal two is going to be in this case, six. So all of that is cool, but what is this modulo operator? What it, does it do? Well, let's see what we have here. So let's say we want to have a result which is going to be 15 modulo two. Let's just test what we get there, just to see what the result will be. And we can see we get one. So what is this one? So what the modulo operator does is it gives us the remainder, which pretty much means 15 divided by two is going to be seven remainder one. So it just gives us the one, which is the remainder. So the result, the rest, so to speak, of our calculation. If we use three here, for example, the remainder will be zero because 15 divided by three is five remainder zero. So if we run it twice, we can see the remainder is zero. 
Now, on the other hand, if we use 4, then the remainder will be 3 because 15 divided by 4 is 3 and remainder 3. And there we are. Now, of course, what you also can do is a calculation like such. So var A is going to be 5, var B is going to be 3. And because we're not going to change them, we can also use val here. So we make them immutable. And of course, the result can be A divided by B, for example. So this works as well. And of course, all calculations will work here. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video, and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass, because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos, which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations, which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. Now, what you can see is it says the result is one even though 5 divided by 3 should be something like 1.66666. Why is that? Why does it not give us the, the right value here? Well, that's because it says that this is an integer. So val a is going to be an integer, and val b is also going to be an integer. So if we divide integers, then we also re get a integer as a result. An integer only contains whole values so it cannot have a floating point value or it cannot be a floating point value so what we can do is we can make this one for example a double so if i do 5.0 and then try to divide it by 3 you can see i get an error here it says type this match required int found double so now it's trying to divide a double by an integer and that creates this type mismatch now, what can we do about it? Well, the thing is that our result itself is an integer. So we cannot do this calculation because result is an integer. Now, what we can do is we can either make this whole thing an integer. So we just say to int. By this, we make this whole expression an integer or the result of this expression an integer again. So this is a function or a method called toInt. And what it does is it converts this value into an integer. That solves the problem, as you can see. But that's really not going to give us the result that I wanted. I really wanted this to be a double, which means I wanted this to be a floating point value, which will give me something like 1.66. So that's not the solution. The solution is to change the result type to a different type or to create a new variable which contains the value in a different type. So what I can of course do is I can go ahead and say result double, for example, is going to be of type double. So now I can go ahead and use my result double instead for this calculation and also print result double. All right. The other way would have been of course to change this variable here, but because this variable is created and already used for something, later on changing it can be very tricky. In our example, it's not really tricky because we are the developers of this line of code. But let's say we are using this variable and it was created by someone else. And he used this variable at multiple different points in his application. So then we have this situation where we are using a variable and we are changing it and maybe even changing its whole purpose and then it might not work for other occasions where it was used so that's something that we really want to avoid so we just create a new variable which will be of the right type of type double and then we do the calculation so now let's see what the result will be of this calculation and if we do so now we can see we get this 1.66666 and then at the end it says it's a seven because it just can't add more sixes because it would be infinite amount of sixes. But at one point it just rounds up the last value here. 
All right, so that was a little look into arithmetic operators and also into types. So we have to be careful with the types that we are using. So I'd say we check out the other type of operators that there are. And the next one will be comparison operators. So see you in the next video.